بني الإسلام على خمس. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Islam is built on five pillars. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Welcome to another edition of Faith of Life. In the month of Ramadan, Muslims fast, and we have discussed in the past the blessings of the month of Ramadan and the benefits of fasting, the many, many benefits. And we have also explored the reason why we fast and how, the, uh, how this relationship between the Holy Quran and the fasting uh, is a strong relationship since fasting is one of the best ways to uh, manifest uh, the uh, teachings of the Quran especially when we fast we control ourselves and we try to sil silence our desires we try to think more inwardly and be more spiritual I would like uh, to talk today about some rulings of fasting for the benefit of fasting uh, the month of Ramadan or actually uh, the suppurgatory, the extra fasting that we strongly recommended uh, in Islam, uh, not only in the month of Ramadan, uh, which is obligatory, but we can also fast in Shawwal six days, uh, three days a month, uh, the 13th and 14th and 15th day, or fast Monday and Thursday. And of course, the best fasting is the fasting of Prophet uh, David, who used to fast every other day. Uh, Nabiullah Dawood, peace be upon him. And uh, as we learn about fasting, we need, uh, because it is an act of worship and because it is one of the pillars of Islam and it is the fourth pillar of Islam and uh, to fast the month of Ramadan and it is strongly recommended to fast in other days. Since it is like that, it is an act of worship and every act of worship must have some components that are uh, what we call must to do. They must be there and we call them uh, arkan or in English pillars. They are like the pillars of a table or a chair. Uh, without those pillars, uh, we cannot have the actual thing, the object being in its normal state. Uh, the house has pillars, everything has pillars. So the pillars, metaphorically speaking here, pillars are the things that would make the fast uh, correct and pr uh, accepted by God Almighty. Like for prayer, there are pillars. We have to read the opening chapter. We have to say Allahu Akbar. We have to make the prostration, the bowing, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, for Hajj, we have to wear the, uh, the seamless garment, ihram. We have to do the circumambulations around the Kaaba. We have to uh, go to Arafat, Mount Arafat. So every act of worship must have those pillars. For the pillars of fasting, they are as follows. Number one, intention. Number two, abstinence from eating, drinking, and having intimate relations. And number three, time. Now the first one is intention. Everyone has to make an intention. So when I want to pray, I have to make intention that I'm praying the afternoon prayer or the evening prayer. Uh, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said every action is based on the intention. So what we intend is the most important. Sometimes we intend to do something good, but we don't do it. Still, God rewards us. Sometimes we intend to do uh, uh, something good, and then we achieve it. God rewards us. Sometimes we intend to do something bad, and we don't do it. God still rewards us. And sometimes we intend to do something bad, and we do it. So our intention and our action will be based on our intention. This is in our relationship with God, and the only one who knows the intention is, of course, God Almighty than ourselves. The intention in fasting, meaning a person intends to fast the month of Ramadan or intends every day to renew it, as it is recommended, uh, every night before dawn. And uh, the scholars, uh, all of them, agreed that you have to renew it, except Imam Malik, who said uh, you intend only in the beginning of the month of Ramadan. That is enough. So your intention is good. Now, uh, as you intend to fast, you may forget and eat or drink. So according to the teachings of Prophet peace be upon him, he said, whoever forgets and eats or drinks while fasting, uh, 
let him or her continue fasting, it will be considered as a charity from God, uh, as if God quenched the thirst of that person who is thirsty or gave him some food. Now, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, let him continue fasting, which means there is no qada, you don't have to make up that fast, so you're okay. However, Imam Malik said it is better to make it just in case, make up for that day, to be clear. And as much as he made it easy in terms of intention only once uh, in the beginning of the month, and the others said no every day, in this case, he actually made it uh, more difficult, and he said you uh, make it up just in case. So this is why we have these disagreements of Imams, and in reality, it's cause it, it leads to a balance. But according to the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, you do not have to make it because your intention was not to break your fast. You forgot. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us a general rule, which of course can be applied, which can be applied everywhere in the Islamic jurisprudence, that we are not to be, hold res to be held responsible for uh, actions we do while we are unconscious, such as in the state of sleep, or we are, of course, um, uh, we pass out for medical reason, or, of course, when we uh, forget, just forgetfulness. And we are human beings, we do forget. So intention is number one. Now, number two is abstinence, to abstain from eating any food and that would include any nourishment, drinking, and having intimate relations. And this means, of course, uh, any nourishing element should not enter our body. Otherwise, our fast is spoiled. Having said that, uh, if a person has a medical problem, as we will see soon, uh, he or she does not have to fast because they need that uh, nourishment because uh, their bodies are weak or, or for some reasons. Uh, but what I want to stress here is we're not supposed to eat any food, drink any drink, and of course intimate relations are not allowed until, of course, after uh, Maghrib time to Fajr time. So this is uh, very simple. Other uh, nations and other prophets used to fast by abstaining from talking, abstaining from doing other things as the Quran teaches, and of course the Old Testament, and the New Testament uh, about Jesus and other prophets, peace be upon them, Mary, all of them fasted. The third one is time. Time is important, and that's, of course, time meaning from dawn to sunset, from dawn to sunset. So the person can eat and drink until the adhan, the call to prayer, to announce that it is dawn. Or, of course, today we use the chart, so we know the time, if it's this uh, time, so I have to stop. And to sunset, as soon as it, the sun sets, the full disk disappears, and it's Maghrib, or sunset, then we are allowed to break the fast. And actually, the sunnah, the right way, according to the Prophet, is to delay the pre-dawn meal, the suhoor, which is a sunnah, which is a good thing to do, the pre-dawn meal, and it has blessings, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us, and to hasten uh, breaking the fast, and preferably on dates or water, or whatever is available, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us. And we shouldn't forget, of course, to pray, because he said there is a, the, the, a supplication that is granted at the time of breaking the fast. You are happy, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, you are happy that you made that fast. And, of course, God will reward you, and you're breaking your fast. You pray to God while being happy and joyful, and while achieving this great deed of fasting for God Almighty. And, of course, we should always pray to God Almighty to bless us all, guide us all, and that our fast is, of course, uh, accepted.